uh, like Steve Jobs, who clearly was brilliant. He had the dreams, he had the vision, uh, he saw where things could possibly go. Uh, but like all of us, you know, he made mistakes along the way. I made mistakes along the way. And that's just the nature of being an entrepreneur. Steve was really hurt because we were such close friends. <laughs>
And so there's certain criteria that we look for. We think of ourselves as mentors, as investors. Uh, we help bring in other investors and we help carry it all the way through to when the companies are sold or IPO. If a startup is approaching you, they're interested in potentially having you as an advisor or an investor in their company, what's the best way to get your attention? It's pretty hard <laughs> because we're really not looking for anything new. We are involved with just some incredible companies. They go all the way from stem cell uh, technology for regenerative medicine, a uh, new company we spun out of out of Celtine called Cellularity. My principal activity is for a company called RX Advance in Boston, uh, which we started in 2013. We'll do 500 million in revenue this year and several billion in revenue next year. And it's all about completely transforming the way you care for chronically ill people. Each of our companies are trying to solve really big problems, but they are created by entrepreneurs who have done it before. These are serial entrepreneurs and um, they have a track record that we can look at. Marketing is something that you're known for. Many years ago you were targeting baby boomers for Pepsi Generation. They were teenagers at the time. Mm. Many people are under the impression that baby boomers, they're just not that tech savvy. If you were marketing to baby boomers today, how would you go about marketing to them? Well, I actually do market to baby boomers today. Uh, I'm co-founder and uh, the chairman and chief marketing officer of a company called RX Advance and we focus on uh, people who are uh, needing chronic care uh, for their health. Uh, they tend to be older, many of them are baby boomers, and we have built the first platform for what is called the RX ecosystem. That's the $840 billion uh, ecosystem of pharmaceutical drugs and how you get uh, better uh, actionable analytics to the specialists and how you can get people involved in their own health uh, care. Baby boomers are an important part of that market. And are there any specific strategies that have been successful for you to reach that audience? Uh, we're focusing on what's called the avoidable drug impact medical cost. That's the $350 billion of uh, avoidable costs of people being, in some cases, over-medicated or getting side effects from uh, prescription drugs where the physicians who are writing the scripts don't know what the other physicians are writing and getting the actionable analytic into the hands of the professionals you know, getting monitoring of uh, adherence to the pharmaceutical products by these chronically ill patients in their own homes, not in the hospitals. And if you can do that with the same kind of platform technologies that have worked in other industries, healthcare has been the last one to kind of get on board with uh, transformative technologies. Uh, you can literally um, change the healthcare system enough that you could give everybody healthcare in, in the U.S. And the debate of do we replace Obamacare or do we repair Obamacare, which is all about policies and subsidies. The real focus should be on, so how do we deliver the best quality health care for a lower cost to the chronically ill patients, many of whom are the baby boomers. Mm -hmm. Why do you think there's so much waste, so much fraud that happens within this industry as compared to others? The big problem in the healthcare industry is that it's opaque. Uh, there's no transparency. Uh, no one knows what things really cost. If you want to go and have a joint replacement uh, surgery procedure, uh, it can cost thousands of dollars differently within a 12 mile radius of your hospital. Uh, no one really knows uh, how much money is made on pharmaceutical products. You know, why are pharmaceutical products in some cases two, four, five times more expensive than those same pharmaceutical products that are um, you know, bought in Canada or bought in Europe? Uh, so this is an industry that has had no transparency. It hasn't changed its technology in a fundamental way uh, in the last 30 years. And it's an industry that is largely shaped by special interests, by uh, rules, precedents, protocols uh, that seem illogical but are there because of um, special interests. It's an industry that, that is ripe for innovation. There are many people in the industry who are very competent, who want to make changes in the industry and it's going to happen, it's just a matter of time.